Welcome to a special edition of the Entertainment Corner. I'm Paul Ortiz and join us on the set and walking him to Laguna Woods Village is 11 time Grammy Award winner Tony Lindsay joining us right here on Village Television. Thanks for joining us. Oh, today. yeah, are you kidding? Super to have you here today. I am like completely <laughs> overwhelmed. I think you're a little surprised by what the village is actually able to provide to our residents, and the, and the television station is just a small this part is, of that. This is unbelievable. Yeah, good. I That's feel like I'm in the big time, man. <laughs> well, what brings you to Laguna Woods Village? I know your uh, cousin Alan has My been cousin, on, on the stage as well. Cousin Alan Williams lives down here. He's, uh, he's a changed man now. <laughs> I bet you he loves living here. Yeah, I, you know, I tried to uh, convince him to move out here when I moved in. Uh, I live up in the Bay Area. Sure. And I moved here in 1980. And Alan and uh, another friend of ours who we, we all, we had a singing group together when we were younger called Four of a Kind. Right. Him and uh, Stephen Riddick came out to, uh, they came out to visit me. Mm -hmm. And I tried to convince him to stay in California, but he went wow. back to New York. Back, huh? But now he's here and he says, this is where they're going to bury him. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Now you're actually from Kingston, New York. Kingston, you came New York. out here to San Jose some time ago. Uh, what, what made you come all the way back west? Mm -hmm. The warm weather. Yeah. Yeah. New York is uh, it, it's a beautiful place to be from, right. but it's too cold there. It's too cold in the winter, and it's too hot in the summer. Right. So you have just a few weeks uh, when spring is coming in, and then when the fall hits, there's a few weeks that the weather is really nice, but the rest of the time, it, it's, it's pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. Now, I know you went to school, I believe, in Albany for a little bit. Yes. But did you actually train and go to school for, for vocal lessons and to be a musician? Actually, our, our training was uh, in, the, in the hallways and on the street corners. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to uh, uh, practice in, in the hallway at the, the apartment building I lived in. And, you know, just singing on the street corner, that, that was our training. Right. And uh, as we, we got older, we had the, uh, a group called Four of a Kind, like I said, and we used to do a lot of singing. Then we had some older guys who were in, in groups like kind of imitating the Temptations and all of those kind of groups, they used to teach us how to sing harmonies and right. all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I just never stopped. Right. You were singing Motown and R&B back then? As oh, well? yeah, we, yeah. Were doing, we were doing everything. The Beatles, uh -huh. uh, Motown stuff, Santana stuff. We were doing Santana stuff and I didn't even, it never dawned on me that Could I would end up doing that. that. Right, yeah. Were they were there the guys on the street corner singing R and B or were they what, what year was this? Because I know um, oh man, I was music a, was really changing depending on what corner you. were. I was a baby. <laughs> I think I was a seven or eight, eight years, years old. old, something like that. I was I was the youngest in the group. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know you always wanted to be a singer? Was yeah. that something you knew from oh, yeah. from birth? Huh. Yeah, that was yeah. that was it. Wow. You know, when we saw we used to watch the Beatles and all those groups on TV and. And the girls were crying and wanting to get out. We knew exactly what we wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. I mean, that was that was easy, right? And plus, we we just enjoyed it. You know, it's um, we had, we had a really good group. We used to do a lot of talent shows and mm -hmm. and all that kind of. And we went we went all the time. Sure, but it's tough in the music business because even when you came out here from New York. You had to take a job at Guitar Center just to make yeah. make it you know make you able to pay I, the bills. And, I worked and at get Guitar some Center, table, right? Yeah, I worked at yeah. Guitar Center. I worked at, uh, you remember Montgomery Wards? Of course, yeah. I was a uh, men's suit salesman at Montgomery right. Wards. Yeah. Uh, I worked at another place called the Clothing Clearance Center. Wow. They'd first, they're more like a men's warehouse mm -hmm. now, but the Clothing Clearance Center was kind of the first ones to start there. Right. And, but every time, even when I was going to school at Albany State University, and when I came out here working uh, these other jobs, I, I always had a band that I was working with. So you're always working at night, doing what you really loved, right? You loved it. Yeah. Did you ever think you were going to have to give it up because you were going to have to get a, a real job at some point? This is a real job. <laughs> yeah. You but know, there it comes it, a time in your career, though, you're kind of thinking, wow, is this really going to you know, happen for me or is this just kind of a, a love affair? You know what? That, that never, even, a job, that right? never crossed my mind. Huh. Good for you. Never did. I, I had made up my mind a long time ago that sink or swim, I was going to be doing music. Guys, I love it so much. Right. You know, it's um, and it's been very re rewarding to me. Uh, thank God uh, there's no wood here to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, even, it's, uh, even back then, when you were working in those jobs, you were actually playing in small clubs throughout throughout oh, the yeah. evening, right? Yeah. And on campus, uh, as soon as I got to campus, mm -hmm. after I did all my registration, got my classes and everything. I immediately started looking for the musicians on campus. Right. 
and found them and we'd put a band together and do stuff on campus and then I, I lived in Albany after I left school. I lived in Albany for eight years mm -hmm. and got in the community and uh, I was performing with a band there in the area yeah. and working at a men's clothing store. I always I always did the men's clothing store thing in the band because I can get free clothes, you know. <laughs> there you go. You had to have That's stuff smart. to wear. Oh, right. yeah. Guitar center, right, for, for, yes. for music uh, instruments. And then, of course, uh, the Montgomery Wars gets yourself a nice outfit. All those outfits. Very smart. And uh, everything, everything connected. Now, when yeah. I say Tower of Power to you, and Chester and Ron Beck, what does that mean to you? And Those were the guys, um, it, wow. Ronnie Beck and Chester, well, Ronnie Beck uh, uh, and Chester were both in, in Tower of Power at the mm -hmm. same time, because Dave Garibaldi, the drummer with Tower, had, he left for a while, and uh, Ronnie Beck replaced him. Yeah. And then um, after Ronnie left Tower of Power, not long after that, Chester left Tower of Power and went to Santana. Right. But Ronnie and Chester were really good friends. So when Chester would come off the road from the Santana band, he would always come and see our band. Our, uh, I had a band with Ronnie Beck called Spangalang. Right. And I still do stuff with that band. We just have different members that I use now. But Chester would come and see us all the time. And uh, this one time he came and he says, hey, man, uh, Santana's auditioning singers. You know, if you'd like to get an audition, yeah. I'll be glad to throw your name in. Uh, and I said, yeah. And, and you know, the weird part about it, as I told him, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do that, but I really didn't care if I got the gig or not, uh -huh. because at the time, I was working uh, uh, one of the first call background singers with Narda Michael Walden, doing all the recording sessions up in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and we were doing uh, stuff for uh, background vocals for Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin. Um, I mean, the list of so you were people already just, busy. Oh yeah, and not only that, I was doing a lot of uh, jingles. Right for uh, this uh, agency called Keller and Cohen, which they're gone now, mm -hmm. but I was making a lot of money. <laughs> and when I took the, when I did the thing with Santana, I actually took a cut and pay because <laughs> I was doing, I was doing quite well there. Right. But yeah. I did the audition and it, yeah. it worked out perfect because I had to do a recording session with Narda mm -hmm. the same day that I had the audition with Santana. Mm -hmm. And Santana's, uh, the studio that he was doing the auditions at and Narda Mark and Wal Walden's studio were only four blocks away from each other. Wow. So I went and I did the audition first, left the audition, went over to do the session, and I was at Narda Michael Walden's place pretty much all day. So when I got home that night, I got home, must have been about eight, nine o'clock at night, and I checked my answer machine, I must have had about six messages on there from the Santana manager Already? saying, yeah. hey man, Carlos really <laughs> likes you, you want the gig, it's yours. Wow, that's amazing. And that, the rest is history. How was that adjustment from playing those small clubs to now you're playing in front of you know tens of thousands of people in a large auditorium? Did Actually, I like the larger audiences better. Yeah. When I do a, anytime it's a, a small audience, like for instance, if we were here in the studio and there yeah. was only four or five people, that, I get kind of uncomfortable with it because it you makes get, it really personal. Yeah, yeah. You get but, the eye contact. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. But when you get 350,000 people out wow. there, it's like, yeah. And it, it's a whole different uh, uh, type of energy and, and oh, uh, yeah. what's that, the, the adrenaline thing sure. kicks in. It's, right. it's pretty amazing. And you did the Super Bowl. So, yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that. I mean, you had performers all around you. And yeah. It, was it Beyonce or somebody? Beyonce came on and, stage uh, and Michelle Branch, too. Wow. Huh. And that, you know what? That, that it really made me mad because that was probably one of the worst <laughs> Super Bowls that had ever been. The Raiders and the uh, Tampa right. Bay Buccaneers. That's right. That it was, was terrible. Against, that was against John Gruden, too. Exactly. Which was funny, right? And the Raiders had just fired John Gruden and he went to Tampa Bay. That's right. So he knew all and the he, plays. He brought him home to championship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're a big sports fan, too. I love it. Yeah. Especially like, the Warriors. Oh, yeah. Well, we have a guy here. He, he's kind of a Golden State Warriors fan, too. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Dave DeSantis he loves the Golden State oh. Warriors. Has jackets, socks, hats. You know, I got everything. Yeah. And see, I do, I do the national anthem all the right. time. Mm -hmm. I do it for the Warriors, the uh, Sharks. I've done it, of course. I've done a couple of the Giants games. Yeah. Um, who else? The Warriors, Sharks. Uh, 40, 49ers. 49ers. Yeah, absolutely. I'm doing a 49er game in November. Right. I'm doing it. Right. But a lot of the shark stuff and uh, and and, uh, and the Warriors. I can't wait to do that new the, the new Chase Center that they're going in. Sure. 
And I then, hope they call me. And then the Levi uh, Stadium is open now. Yeah. So you've been there as well. That's supposed to be beautiful. Yeah, I've done that a few times oh, already. Good. Well, I want to talk to you some more. We want to really talk about this show that you're going to be doing at the Performing yeah. Arts Center, and that's going to be you with the Soul Soldiers, the Soul and Soldiers. that's going to come up on November 10th. So if we can just take a quick little break right now, we'll be back with more of Tony Lindsay, and we're going to be talking about the Soul Soldiers coming to the Performing Arts Center right here in Laguna Woods Village. For one night only at the Performing Arts Center, the former lead singer for Santana. Are you sure you like that? He'll be performing a mixture of Motown and traditional R&B that will take you back to the magical days of your youth, plus grace from his years with Santana. Don't miss this one. One night only, November 10, 11-time Grammy Award winner Tony Lindsay at the Performing Arts Center. Well, we're back with Tony Lindsay, and thanks for joining us again for the second Absolutely. part of the Entertainment Corner. Now, this is a, an old prose presentation. It's called An Evening of Motown and R&B. Tell us about how this kind of came about. Well, actually, um, it was real easy because all of the years, that, the 25 years with Santana, we, we were doing so much stuff that I really didn't have a lot of time to uh, get into other things. Mm -hmm. You know, I did my, I finally got my, well, this is actually the fifth solo CD that I did. But I always wanted to put a group together of some of my uh, uh, friends and favorite people mm -hmm. that are in the Bay Area. And I had the opportunity to do it with the Soul Soldiers, and I, I grabbed them, and, and we've yeah. been doing it quite well. It's been probably about three or four years now that wow. we've had the group together. Yeah. Now, do you guys perform a lot in the Bay Area? And, oh, yeah. Because obviously that's how you met, and some of them are actually working during the day while they perform at night. I know uh, David Jones does that. Right. David Jones is a UPS driver. <laughs> yes, I, Matter of fact, he's getting ready. Matt, he, I think he's, he's re, I think he's retired at the end of well, this good. month. I Finally, so. yeah, yeah. I, he's, he's. I saw uh, a performance. You said that here's David Jones. He's playing playing guitar for you. He's working during the day at UPS, and yeah. he's getting to church the next day to help out over there as well. Exactly. Yeah. That a church, dedicated man. The church band that he plays in, they're, yeah. they're pretty. All that church music now is Beautiful. like. All of, all of the really good musicians, they're all playing in the church now. Absolutely. And David, David, uh, yeah, he's a, an amazing bass player. Um, still working for UPS for a couple more weeks. And I got um, uh, my buddy Fred Ross. Yeah, let's talk about Fred a little bit. He kind of helps you on stage. He does a lot of the vocals as well. He's yeah. Got a, he's got a real deep. He's real got that deep. In the, and he can sing some really uh -huh. high stuff, too. So can you. <laughs> Well, I try every now and then. I don't, yeah. I don't do it too much. Yeah. How do you know Fred? Do you guys just know each other from the music business? You know what's funny? Um, uh, for me doing the Santana gig, I had a lot of gigs booked with my band Spangalang. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to get a sub a lot because we'd be going on the road. So Fred was one of the guys that they used to sub for me. Okay. And I had never met him before. I heard his voice. And I said, yeah, this guy would be cool. So he used to sub for me with that uh, with Spanglang all the time, yeah. and that's how that relationship started. And he was definitely one of the first guys that I wanted to call to be a part of it. Right. You now know? you have uh, Janice is also joining you on oh, vocals. Man. She's amazing. Janice right. Maxie Reed. Right. She's a, uh, a very good, she's a teacher too. Okay. Matter of fact, she still does a lot of lesson stuff. Mm -hmm. But she can do opera stuff. She can do the uh, the rhythm and blues. She's a great piano player. Wow. You know, uh, and she they're, you're really going to like her. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, they're probably going to ask the rest of us to leave the stage <laughs> and let her perform by sure. herself. Yeah, and she's performed with, and just like you have, she's performed with some of the greats of R&B yeah. uh, forever and ever. Well, there's, this, uh, there's a, uh, an R&B singer out there now. Her name is Lettucey. Who was very popular, mm -hmm. and she Janice is one of uh, she's one of Janice's students, mm -hmm. um, and there's there's quite a few other ones that are, wow, that are Janice's students too, and they're they're all starting to recognize her at the, right. but she's she's an amazing amazing talent. Now your group, the Tony Lindsay and Soul Soldiers, yeah, you actually travel to Europe, and you're going to be in London, and then you're going to be coming to Laguna Woods. Is this the same group that travels with you throughout the world? Actually, when I when I go out of the country. Mm -hmm. I, I find musicians that, that okay. live in, the, like going to Japan and sure. all that. I have uh, uh, bands that are already there. Wow. Because it, it can get pretty expensive. Oh, with, absolutely. Uh, taking the, unless uh, what I'm working on now is uh, getting an agent mm -hmm. out of a lot of these places. Mm -hmm. So when they have these big festivals, 
then they'll be able to bring us over to uh, do right. all of this Right, they all stuff. go together then. But in the, uh, in the Bay Area, the, the first year that I put the uh, uh, Soul Soldiers together, we did the, uh, the San Jose Jazz Festival, we did the Monterey Jazz Festival, which living in, in that area is very rare, especially the Monterey Jazz Festival yeah. because it's so big. Right. It's, it's very rare that they will, they will hire a local uh, act to, to come in and perform there. Right. And they brought us in the first year. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. So what kind of music do you really like to play? And obviously you're playing a lot of the greats, oh, but yeah. you've, you've, you've performed with everybody. Steve I try to Wendell, do it all. Aretha Franklin, yeah. uh, Lou Rawls is one of your favorites, I would imagine, yeah. as well. Al Jarreau. Al Jarreau, of course, um, yeah. God, such a long walk. Santana, of course. Uh -huh. um, I did a, we did a, a, a CD for Curtis Mayfield. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a long it's list so of folks. I've, my memory is so bad when it comes <laughs> to this stuff. That's not too bad, but you've performed and worked with some of the greatest musicians that's ever yeah. performed. That's amazing. Have you had some really good experiences that you really just stick out in your head over the last 30 or something years? Uh, everything. Or maybe a place. Yeah, yeah every, everything has been, you know, everything is uh, taking me to the, the next step. Right. I, every, everything keeps escalating now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now this, this life after Santana, I mean, this is... I've been having such a good time. My my CD, something beautiful. Right. I got uh, two number one singles of an, on the independent soul charts. Right. From that so far, the third single is doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, to where to the point to where I I get contacted from London. They asked me to come over there and perform at their uh, a club called Pizza Express over there. So I'm doing uh, September 19th and 20th over right. there. Yeah. And there's a lot of other places that are picking up like that. Now, something beautiful that's on your new CD, your yeah. single. Now, you wrote that for a specific reason, I would imagine. It's like telling people don't ever give up because that's it. Something's going to happen. Yeah, something good's going to happen. And it's it's uh, I wrote that with my nephew Donovan Henderson. Uh -huh. He's the one that sent me the track, and I happened to be over in Europe at the time. We were I was working over there with the Magic of Santana right. with Alex Lidgerwood, and uh, he sent the track to me and. Once I finally got a time, the time to sit down and listen to it, I was like, wow, this, this track is pretty cool. Yeah. So on my way back home, I had a, uh, flew from Hamburg to Copenhagen, and I had a, a three-hour layover waiting for, the, for my flight to get back to San Francisco. And I'm like, wow, what am I going to do with this whole time? He said, oh, wait a minute. Let me check out this track. Mm -hmm. So I pulled my phone out, pulled the track up, and put the headphones on. Now I'm sitting in the airport that's jam-packed with people. And as soon as I started playing that track, it was like I was in a room by myself. Yeah. And before I got on the plane, that song was written. Wow. Isn't that amazing. I got home. I set up my uh, my laptop mm -hmm. on the on the dining room table with my little Apogee microphone and hooked it up. I took the track and I dragged it over. I sang all the vocals and, and put all the vocals down and wow. and then I sent it down to my buddy Randy Yamada down here in L in L uh, Los Angeles. Uh -huh. And the rest is history with that one.
Uh, yeah, I liked your video. It was, it was shot really cool. Yeah, and it was kind of like it fit, you know. Well, you fit, know who whatever. shot that video? Are you familiar with Pete Escovito? I'm not, no. Are you kidding? You know, well, you know, you know Sheila E. <laughs> of course, yes. Sheila, Pete, Pete Escovito is Sheila's dad. Oh, okay. No, her brother That's Peter. That's where the E comes from. That's right. Yeah. So now her brother, Peter Michael Escovito, uh -huh. they all live in Los Angeles now. Right. But Peter Michael is an extremely talented guy. Not only is he a great musician, but his video stuff is incredible. Right. incredible. So yeah. I, I asked him if he'd shoot it for me, and he did it. He had the drones and everything going. Oh, sure. Yeah, it was well done. Oh, man, I love well that video. It's very cool. Yeah, if you want to watch it, you can just uh, Google Tony Lindsay on uh, YouTube, and you'll see your Something Beautiful video. Yeah, yeah. and you can also <laughs> buy the CD. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's well, everywhere. <laughs> now, when you're here on November 10th at the Performing Arts Center, will you have, like, shirts and uh, CDs available I don't for have any. I don't have any shirts, but uh -huh. i got plenty of CDs, there and I'm go. definitely bringing them with me. Uh-huh. So. I take those CDs everywhere, man. Now, I know Sheila Bialka and Alan have kind of given you the tour of the community. Yeah. And you got to eat lunch at the 19 restaurant, which Everything. is a nice, beautiful view. Sheila's something else, man. Oh, yeah, she is. Yeah. She's, she's, she's she, kind of shy. Huh? She knows yeah. how to crack the whip, man. <laughs> I'm scared of her. You should see the stink eye I'm getting from her once in oh, a while. Oh, is that right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's doing great. We do appreciate it. The old pros are terrific. They have a, a great organization. They're helping you present this, an evening of Motown and R&B. Yeah. And you got a chance to go to the auditorium as well. It's quite a... That's a beautiful place, man. Not bad for a little community, huh? That is going to... I know it's going to sound really good in there. Yeah. That's going to be nice. Yeah. So for oh. folks that don't know what we're doing... Now, the Soul Soldiers, we do a combination of Marvin Gaye, mm -hmm. Bill Withers, Lou Rawls, Sam Cooke, Donny Hathaway, Aretha Franklin, wow. Etta James, and Nancy Wilson. Jeez. That's going to be a beautiful evening. That's going to be on November 10th. We want to yes. encourage you to get out there and get your tickets. Tickets will be available at the box office. And you can also go to oldpros.org and get some ticket information as well. That's going to be November 10th. That's going to be Sunday. Performance is going to be at 5 o'clock over at the Performing Arts Center. Not only will you be able to see Tony Lindsay in person, yes. but you're going to also be able to see the Soul Soldiers who are going to be performing with him. And it, it, Honest, just meeting you today, it sounds like it's going to be a terrific event. Are you, are you going to be at the show? I hope so. You know, that's Veterans Day holidays, so I hope I'm going to be uh, good. around. That's my, my birthday's on the 12th, so maybe I'll come over. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good <laughs> birthday present. We might even have to bring you up to uh, oh, no. do a little something. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't want to hear me sing, no. Well, you could no. do a little James Brown step or something. For there me. you go. I'll try. I'll work on that. <laughs> I got a month to work on that. Okay, how's that go? <laughs> well, we want to thank the old pros for bringing you out here. And yeah. Uh, they're a terrific uh, club. And if anybody wants more information, go to oldpros.org, and you'll find ticket information. You'll find out about some of their performances they'll be having. And uh, we also want to thank your cousin Alan for setting this up. And, I know. Uh, he's, 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 he's something else, man. Yeah, he's done all right. I'm telling you. He finally listened to me and moved out here <laughs> after all of these years. It took a couple decades, but he did it, right? Now he, now he says, yeah, I, told her, I told her just to, oh. just to take my ashes and sprinkle them over the, over the Pacific Ocean out yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's a local now, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it, this is a great community, though. I'm, I'm glad to see that he's down here. Oh, we're, we're happy to have you. Oh, yeah. Well, we uh, wish you a, good, a lot of luck on uh, the show on the November 10th. And, Thank you. Uh, appreciate you coming on the Entertainment Corner. Oh, yeah. I'm glad to be here. And I'm Paul Ortiz, and we'll see you next time on the Entertainment Corner.